What a historic event this week as they shot a dick up in space and also a rocket ship. If you want to hear two dicks talk about dumb shit, go to www.nttfgpod.com and subscribe. I'm Rock. And I'm Archie. Well, our opinions, eh, they might not matter to some, but... What are you doing in there? It's a podcast. Immature. Crash. Trashy. And those are their good qualities. These poor schmucks are a couple of IQ points away from eating paste. But when it comes to music, sports, and comedy, well, that's all they know. You're listening to Not These Two Fucking Guys. Not These Two Fucking Guys podcast. Yo, Rock. Yo. Have you ever heard of woke? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Rock. Yo. Have you ever heard of woke coke? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> are you searching the fucking dark web again <laughs> have you ever heard of woke coke never heard of it really no well it's funny you ask because drug dealers are targeting middle class users with ethically sourced cocaine for 200 euro a gram to suit their vegan organic lifestyle come on 200 euros which i believe is like 236 dollars um so there's such thing as woke coke bro now but like wealthy users are sharing out a fortune for the upmarket sniff to suit their vegan organic lifestyle and this is on dailymail.co.uk so let me ask you this what in the fuck (laughs) makes regular run-of-the-mill cocaine straight from bolivia like fucking <laughs> yeah, like what makes great. that not vegan well i'm gonna tell you oh oh do tell <laughs> basically <laughs> <laughs> yo i got that woke coke motherfucker <laughs> i'm telling you yeah. so they're tagging it as like this product is sold with like environmentally friendly and ethically mm-hmm. sourced with promises yeah that, it, that it's produced by well-paid farmers definitely Experts have warned that there is nothing to back these claims. <laughs> no shit. <laughs> they are very just a simple, like a clever marketing play. What do you think? Woke Coke. Woke Coke. I mean, dude, honestly, like, it, does it shock me? No, because the world's fucked up right now. So, yeah. Right? Does it shock you that shit like this would happen? No. That the cocaine. I'm that, not going to buy that fucking <laughs> co- cocaine. That eight ball on the street. The dirtiest fucking drug that you could. I mean, heroin's probably the dirtiest, but I'm just saying, like, cocaine's like the, that dirty, gets you into fucking some mess uh, type of drug habit. And then the kick and to add the fucking stealing from your fucking from your your the the aunt that fucking that raised you. Your fucking <laughs> you, typewriter you know what I'm jaw. Oh, and like, God. dude, like, yeah. and now, dude, it's like environmentally friendly sniff. Yeah. OK, so <laughs> I, mean, I mean, is it like playing on the fact that like now, like you see people unfortunately dying from like doing coke that has like fentanyl in it oh, like that? Is God. it like guaranteed? Like it's not fucking like it's like pure and not going to kill you. I mean, that's how see, that's that's the bad part of the whole thing. People might fucking think that. Right. Yeah, and they might do. Ah, oh, it's fine. It's it's good. This it's is made coke. By, it's made by I mean, a the, the FDA is like the FDA is like at least like two years away from saying you know what, fuck it. I really never, I never bought it. So fucking, <laughs> I really haven't. I re- like it was over summer. You know a guy. <laughs> I know a guy who knew a guy. Had a guy, but uh, if it's but but if you lace it with fucking with vegetables, then <laughs> then you're good. Yeah, listen, I I got high and I fucking have typewriter jaw and I fucking yeah. my heart's pounding through my chest, but I got my <laughs> daily requirement of <laughs> fruits and vegetables for the day. <laughs> People just fucking capitalize on everything, bro. They're running with this fucking whole vegan fucking vegetable. Don't eat meat. Eat meat. Don't do. Listen, we're we're uh, we're older cats now, but like like I couldn't imagine. I couldn't like. For me, I couldn't imagine. I don't obviously I don't take drugs, but if I did, I couldn't imagine going out on the streets and buying them now because like God knows what the fuck. <laughs> yeah. like, what do you get? You have no idea. You have no idea. 
I remember, yeah, I remember uh, <laughs> one of our friends, I'm not going to name names, <laughs> to protect the fucking innocent, <laughs> talking about cocaine. He's like, about one per- certain person they got it from that sold cocaine. He's like, listen, I was like, you know, listen, I never got high on it, like, <laughs> but my athlete's foot cleared up. <laughs> <laughs> Like it just cut with like whatever, dude. Like fucking baby powder, tough actin, tin actin, fucking yeah. What's, what's big that they used to cut shit with? Like protein powder? Pa- no, not protein powder. Um, quinine. The fuck is quinine? I don't even know what that is. <laughs> the woke quinine. It, is it woke quinine? Yeah, if you do a protein powder. It's like all right. Listen, I got a little pump and but uh, it's like with pre workout. Got a little pump and I uh. <laughs> well. Ladies and gentlemen, if you if you got marketed some woke coke, you know, be on the lookout. I feel like the, I feel I feel like the fucking the it, it, it's a I can see the guy who buys woke coke. It's like some fucking <laughs> Brooklyn night fucking like like twenty something maybe thirty something fucking white guy, <laughs> extremely and when I mean extremely extremely fucking tight pants. Yes, right. Ankles are fucking choking. Some kind of fucking loafer slash moccasin. You can see the ball of his ankle as he walks. Yeah, because exactly. Because the pants are up so high. You know, fucking, where's the polo? Pops the fucking collar like a fucking grade A, class A, high watermark douchebag. Get in there, Rock. Get up on that shit. Flips the fucking hair to the fucking side. Wants to impress the ladies and buy some fucking woke Coke. And his name is probably like fucking Chad or fucking, I don't know. No <laughs> offense to any Chads out there. <laughs> And it's spelled C H D. Oh, rockin'. Hi, So we're a little late, but do you know what July 1st was? <sighs> no. National Cheeseburger Day. Oh, I love cheeseburgers. No shit. <laughs> <laughs> Happy Bobby Bonilla Day. Oh, my God. July 1st. <laughs> what is he, like 1.2 million a year every year? 1,193,248.22. And to be exact, from the New York Mets every July 1st from the year 2011 to 2035. So here's the weird thing. Where was this contract signed? Was this signed in the 90s? Um, I want to say it was. I think. I want to say it was mid 90s. Wait, with the start of his Mets contract? Yeah, like this fucking contract that they're paying him that he deferred this money. I think it was. Uh, see, I'm, this is where I get lost like a little bit, but. Because you're dumb? In, mm, uh, okay. Well, I'm sorry. I, I read it, the room wrong. In 2000, the Mets agreed to buy out the remaining $5.9 million on Bonilla's contract. However, instead of paying Bonilla the 5.9 at that time, the Mets agreed to make annual payments of nearly $1.2 million for 25 years starting July 1st of 2011, including a negotiated 8% interest on ESPN.com. I'm getting this from. Okay, so I'll tell you this. All right, so now you, you said I refresh my memory. It had to be like 94, 95, 96-ish when they gave him that contract. Okay. It's a fucking monster contract. And by the time four or five years came by, they're like, you know what? We're going to buy you out there, there Bobby. For $5.9 million. Yes. And so then why are, they, the, why are they paying $26 million instead of... No, the- no, that, that's what it was. They had to pay the contract, but, but what it was, they, they deferred it for a certain amount of years. Now, my thing is, has anyone even fucking seen a video, an interview with Bobby Bonilla? <laughs> like, who has even fucking seen him? I want proof of life on Bobby Bonilla. <laughs> you want, could we get him on a podcast? Let me tell you something. I will tell you this. Whoever Bobby Bonilla's agent was, or fucking handler, or manager, he should, he should blow him. <laughs> Every July first. <laughs> Every July first, he just say, like, "All right, well, here we go. I'm not, I'm not fucking, uh, I'm not liking this, but I'm going to do it." Hold on, hold on. Just so I got this straight, because I'm a little mushad. So in 2000, they said, "Hey, Mr. Bonilla, we're going to buy your contract out for 5.9 million dollars." Or was that left on his contract? 
Um, or do you not remember? It was this? more than that. Hold on, I'll tell you right now. But what I don't understand is that if there's a buyout for five point nine million dollars, why did the Mets agree to pay twenty six million over twenty four years, or however much it is? Now he's gonna, I, be, he's gonna be paid through twenty thirty five when he'll be seventy two years old. <laughs> yeah, make it a one point two million dollars. Oh my God. fucking guy, God bless. So. The Mets agreed to this somewhat. In this article, I think it stated that during that time, the Mets were in cahoots with fucking Bernie Madoff, and they and they had a couple of uh, deals going that were panning out to be like sick money. So I, I, I and think that didn't I, happen. <laughs> I think what it was in two thousand to be say under so they owed him five point nine million to buy him out. So. Under this, to stay under the salary cap, they had to defer the money. So that's one point two million for twenty five years. So, oh, so instead, wait, and, wait, instead, wait. they didn't pay five point nine million dollars for like how many years? No, they they owed him five point nine million. Okay, so to stay under the cap, instead of giving him that fucking six million dollars, what it was, they gave him twenty five million for fucking. Oh God, or, or basically. 25 years. That seems like one of the most stupidest it's deals. It's 8% I, interest. Yeah, but I, I think they I think they had no choice and it had to stand under the salary cap or they paid luxury tax and all that bullshit. Uh, so, okay. Listen, trust me. They wouldn't have done it <laughs> unless it benefited them. That's what I'm saying. like, And again, every July 1st, <laughs> Jesus his Christ. agent just walks to his house, drops his fucking... All right, Bobby, you know, here we go. Hey, Bobby Blow. Come here. <laughs> 1.2... Here's 1.3. <laughs> well, my hat's off to Bobby Bonilla. I have a feeling. I want to see him. We're get, I'm going to get him on a podcast. Yeah, Bobby Bonilla. Yeah, I think. You know what? We'll reach out to Bobby, Bobby Bonilla. Um, my hat's off to Bobby Bonilla. And God bless. I'm going to be talking about this next year, July 1st. Art, you ready to go? Oh, hell yeah. I am so excited tonight. Oh, yeah. We have this fine gentleman is Nola Royalty. Oh. Yeah, man. He's His group, I Hate God, has a brand new killer album out entitled A History of Nomadic Behavior. Welcome to Not These Two Fucking Guys podcast, Mike Nine Williams. What's up, brother? What's happening? What's going on? How All y'all right. doing? We're doing good. How are you? How's uh, are you? Everybody safe and sound? Yeah, everything's good, man. Everything's great. Awesome. Good to hear. Good to hear. Yeah, yeah, dude. First, I want I want to congratulate you. Album is awesome. I see Thanks, the reception man. that's getting in the media, and that's that's got to feel good. Yeah, it's great, man. It's really cool. Um, you know, you never know what to think when you put a record out, but um. The label's been really cool to us, man. They've they've got us a lot of opportunities this time. So, uh, mm-hmm. but, yeah, it's like in the Billboard charts right now. It's I forget the numbers, but it's like it's doing better than the last self titled album. Oh, awesome. It actually was in the charts too. So it's pretty weird to have I Hate God in the Billboard <laughs> charts. But, uh, I'll take it, man. I'll take it. We we've worked for thirty something years, you know, in this band. So I'll oh, take yeah. it. It's a uh, Century Media, correct? Yeah. Well, it's on our label. Okay. It's actually we we're putting it out, but we started a label called Take As Needed Records. Okay. So it's on our label, but we licensed it to them. Same All thing right. we did with the last one too, the self-titled one. It's a way to go nowadays. So just license it out. That way you own all your stuff. They mm. they get it for a little while to, you know, distribute and promote and all these things, you know. Yeah, yeah. Then, you know, we'll have we'll own it in That's the future good. so i mean we own the songs now but we can't release it for a few years you know that's that's the deal yeah 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 gotcha yeah. and i think what sets you guys apart like you said been together over 30 years and this is your sixth album right i don't know <laughs> <laughs> you want to use a lifeline and call somebody <laughs> yeah. um 
but I, I think I, that I that's, think is, yeah. so that, that's what's unique about you guys for sure. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's, that's awesome. Well, we we put out like that preaching uh, pre uh, what's it called preaching the end time message, yeah. which was like a compilation of seven inches and uh-huh. compilation songs. And there's a few other things mixed in there too, but I think it's like the officially the sixth album. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I and, fucking I I I love I love I love the sound on this one, man. Sounds like, you know, yeah, I'm liking it too. I I was telling Rocco, I was like, you know, the way Mike writes, like, I think he needs to start to come out of his shell a little more. He's just not letting, (laughs) he's not letting everything out. (laughs) Well, I mean, on this album too, you can understand what I'm saying, you know, like you could on the last album too, the self title, but it was still some, back in those old albums, there's like, it's just drunken rambling, you Mm. know, I mean, a lot of it. And I've changed the lyrics live and stuff on those old albums. Yeah, this, yeah, yeah. These are all set in stone now. It only took us, you know, 30 years to do that. But, but you know, <laughs> no, it's just all right. I, I was actually going to wait a little bit to get into this question. But since we're kind of on it right now, I'd like to ask you something. All right. um, now, you've written for, I, I believe it was Metal Magazine. Uh, excuse me if I'm incorrect, uh, if I'm wrong. Uh, I know you've written for magazines, Metal Magazines before. Yeah. Um, and you you know you had to review bands and all that bullshit and stuff. Yeah. Um, I, I I was reading when I was doing research for for the album. I read you know one review that just said that uh, it's polished up. I hate <laughs> God. Like I mean, it's not the same old you know uh, filth caked persona. You know. Oh uh, well. But how do you feel about the way this album came out? I think it is, and I used to write for Metal Maniacs, by yes, the way. I apologize. And, uh, sorry. I wrote for a bunch of punk zines and uh, had my own zine at one time and, and websites and all that stuff. But yeah, um, I, I think it is a little cleaner than mm-hmm. a lot of our stuff, you know? It's yeah. more, it's kind of a more focused direction than some of the other things, you know? We still don't really care about anything, <laughs> but we, it's just a little more focused like you can understand what i'm saying yeah it's kind of got a a different mix to it than some of our other stuff but Mm. i mean you know an album's just it's just a photograph of like the band at that time so that's Uh how it came out you know it wasn't any kind of preconceived thing you know to yeah to to make it clean we weren't like let's make this one cleaner we just that's just the way it happened you know a guy that mixed it uh well my friend sanford parker did the vocal but the guy that mixed it, he, he, it's just a different person mixing it. And, you know, it's, mm. it's just the way it came out. But, uh, yeah, people are going to say whatever they think, you know, yeah. people want to hear the same record over and over yeah. from a band. And that's stupid. I mean, we have to evolve at some point, you know? Yeah. I mean, hey, everybody can't be ACDC and put out the same album every time. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I love about ACDC, though, you know? Yeah. Listen, They're great. You know, on release day, you're going to get what you're going to get and don't yeah. get upset. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I love that band just for that reason. Kind of well, like Motorhead, too, for a while. They're, you know, doing kind of the same thing. But Ramones, too. They kind of, you know, but ACDC is yeah. the one that just yeah. every record, man. Yeah. But it's, it's great, though. It's great. I love exactly. it. I think, I think, and even when I, I was reading a lot of reviews for this album, I, I think it, it's got to be good because it's, it's like a win-win situation where it says it's, it's you know, uh, I hate God, you know, in its truest form. Like, you've always heard them, but now, the, it, you know, for people that may have not heard you in newer fans, it's like, wow, okay, we're on, you know, th- th- this is something different. So that's got to be cool because you're kind of like checking off every box there. Yeah, that's great, man. I mean, I've noticed over the years, even when we didn't have an album out, I guess we have like a cult following, you know, you even do. when we don't oh, have yeah, a record out, yeah. we still get a lot of people at the shows, which is great. But I always notice younger kids, you know, coming to the shows. So if they're picking up this album for the first time, they can dig back and find the, the noisy, you know, yeah. stuff. <laughs> also, I hope they like it both, you know. Where, where would you say throughout the country – you're 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 most welcomed like you when you know you hit when, oh. you know when you're gonna get to that city you're like oh shit they're gonna bring it shit i mean there's so many man uh oh 
Ohio, man. Cleveland has uh-huh. always been great in the back okay. in the day for sure. Uh, New York, Brooklyn. Mm-hmm. I don't know. There's so many different places, yeah. you know, places in the South too. Atlanta, uh, you know, I mean, that's cool. Raleigh, North Carolina. I mean, it all, it's the West coast, Seattle, Portland. Those are always great. Good. Certain cool. places in California, you know, I tell you, Archie and I are from New Jersey, but I actually, uh, saw you guys live at the first, uh, house core horror film festival in, uh, in Austin. And oh, okay. In Austin. Yeah. Dude, you guys fucking, killed it and you guys had that you had the crowd in the palm of your hand and it was just a really 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 good show and it was the first time i got to see you guys live and okay dude, killer and that that was a, a a real cool experience for me um i met this this guy and his wife there and he's like yeah he's like uh i know mike williams and i hate god and he he married me and my wife and but and i'm oh, like yeah. come on I'm like, come on. I'm like, no, I'm like, this is bullshit. No, that's true. <laughs> sure enough, we actually, uh, uh, towards the end of the night, uh, I don't know if it was the first night, second night, we actually met up with you a little bit outside the hotel, had a beer, and it, you were very, very cool. And you, like, you stopped and like talked and like when you didn't have to, and that really meant a lot to me. So I appreciate that. Oh, man. I mean, that's just how we all are in this band, you know? I mean, sometimes you're in a pissed off mood or something, you just want to get away, but, uh, I don't know, man. We, we're all like that. We hang out because, uh, you know, I'm a fan of music. And when I was growing up as a kid, you know, talking to bands that like it would ignore you or, you know, not pay you an atten- any attention or yeah, yeah, just treat you like a piece of shit. But you're, you're like a fan of this band, you know, so I don't know. We just like to give it back to the people a little bit, you know. Yeah, that's what struck me. It was that you guys were, you know, you know, Jimmy Bauer. You guys were very accessible and like just yeah. talk to the fans. And I'm like, man, that's fucking, that's cool. Yeah, we've always made it a point to do that. You know, that's weird because I ran into Mike. He told me to go fuck my mother. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm joking, bro. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's sometimes that I might say that, you know, <laughs> sometimes it gets overwhelming, like we in uh, not in America or, any, or usually Europe's all right. But like we played in Indonesia and the Philippines mm. and they just like don't know when to stop. Like nothing. <laughs> I love those people. I love playing over there. They're yeah. great. You know, they're all into the music. But they will ask you for picture after picture after picture and sign this. And you're just like, yeah. man, I'm only human. I can't, you know, like you don't want to, you don't want to be rude. But at the same yeah. time, I'm like, fuck y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hear you, bro. Yeah. Uh, listen, I want to dive a little bit into the album. There's a, there's a cool track that I personally like off this album. Um, high risk trigger. Now, yeah. I I know I know that I hate God is it's I know you're not really like a political band, but sometimes no. it calls for a certain. For instance, in High Risk Trigger, there's lyrics that say, "Infection is the way disruptive crowd takes aim. Burn down the rail yard house, destroy USA." Like, what what was going through your head while you were writing this song? And do you feel like your point is being heard here? Yeah, I think so. Uh- those lyrics were most a lot of those lyrics, like 95 percent of the stuff was written like years ago. Uh-huh. So it wasn't like it was written in 2020 specifically okay. about that. You know, Got it. I've always felt that way about <laughs> this country and like different things. You know, mm-hmm. we just try not to. I mean, those things just kind of came out like subliminally, you know, in the in the recording. But um. I mean, I still believe all that stuff, but we try not to like be any kind of political band or anything. I mean, we each have our views, you know, I don't, we don't even really talk about it as a band, you know, it's like, we kind of all just agree on certain things and Mm -hmm. it is what it is, you know, one of those things. Yeah. Yeah, I I like that song. That that song actually stood out as I was listening to the album. Yeah, that's a good one, man. I like that one. Yeah. I think we, uh, I think, I hope we'll be doing that one live. I'm not sure though. Yeah, this this album to me, and, and I know what you said because I've I've heard um, interviews with you in the past, and Archie and I are in a band together, and and I kind of write like you do. I constantly write, and I have shit in a book that you know yeah. I'll put lyrics that I wrote seven years ago in a song just because it, I yeah. felt like it sounds cool here. I'm, I'm going to put it here, yeah. but like if you listen to this whole album in context, it, it does sound like 
a social commentary of like what's going on now, you know, like the anger, the angst, the division, like it, it, yeah. it really kind of puts it all together. Yeah. I'm glad it came out like that, you know, like, but it wasn't really, once again, it wasn't like perceived thing, you know, mm -hmm. like I'm going to write about 2020 or something, you know, it wasn't yeah. like that. There's still, you know, some of them were written in the studio, but those particular ones were, were older lyrics. So, but yeah, I think there's kind of a uniformity to the whole album as far as that goes, which is cool, man. It's a little something different for us, but not too far off. It's still talking about misery and depression and yeah. all those things, you know, they kind of fit in with last year anyway. So sure. it kind of comes around. And and here I thought you were writing about brownies and butterflies, Mike. <laughs> I used to, but uh, I stopped. Stop doing that. Stop doing that. <laughs> so, um, is there a tour schedule? I mean, obviously, I know a lot of shit's up in the air now, but is that what's what you guys are planning on touring for this record? Yeah, whenever we can, you know, uh, it's probably we're talking about something at the end of the year right now. I'm, I can't say anything yet because I don't know what's going to happen. It's not definite, 100% yeah. definite, you know. But, uh, yeah, we're talking about maybe October, November. Mm -hmm. Let a few other bands go out and see <laughs> how that works, you know. Have to I mean, seriously, we're, we're going to kind of sit back and – I mean, it's not – we can't go out now, obviously. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I mean, everybody's going to get va the vaccine and all that, so we'll all be safe out on the road, and mm -hmm. you know. Fucking crazy yeah. shit, isn't it, man? That fucking that? That crazy shit, dude. Yeah. Like, did, did, like this day of age, you, did you ever think that you would have to take a, like a, almost like a two year hiatus because of, yeah. you know, no, it's crazy, man. I mean, we uh, were going to take off like the beginning of last year. Cause we'd toured since like 2017, we'd been on the road. So we were going to take, we came home from the napalm death tour well we got stuck in kiev in the ukraine that's a whole nother oh, story wow. But, uh, wow we were gonna take uh yeah well, on march 11th we were like sitting there and they were like borders are closing <laughs> oh. yeah, and we, we were like in our hotel like asleep because we were playing the next night uh -huh. we had to run to the airport like immediately and like try get to get home <laughs> it was already they were jacking up the uh airline tickets Oh, so it was man. like, you know, $2,000 to fly to America and all this crazy wow. shit. So we were like having to like get routed through. I think I went through Turkey <laughs> to get home, like Istanbul to get Holy back shit. here. Yeah, it was crazy. But uh, I forgot your question, the original question. <laughs> now, as, as, as far as far as touring goes, oh, yeah. um, if that's uh, obviously you plan to tour for the record. Now I've yeah. always heard interviews with you and like, you're like, I hate God is basically a touring band. You know, come see us live. That's where you're going to get the best experience. Yeah. Um, and, and you had a, you know, a theory and, and it, it's actually pretty good where you're saying that some bands just write an album just so they can go out and tour. You guys don't do that. You guys are just going to tour whether your album's out, you know, big gaps in between albums or not. Yeah, we kind of do things on our own terms. We always have, you know, we always want it. That's how we we like to do things. You know, yeah. we don't like record labels telling us what to do. And, you know, we we were signed to Century Media back in the 90s and they they screwed us back then, you know, like the, we were young kids back then and they just kind of took advantage of us. But we got out of that contract Good. So it's weird to be licensing our record to them now. But yeah, we just do things on our own yeah. the way we like to do them, you know. So if we don't have an album out, we still want to go tour. If there's some good bands to bring out with us and, you know, it, it's it's just great, you know. Now, I, I know uh, uh, even your friend Uncle Phil has been doing some virtual concerts. Now, is that even on the table for I Hate God? Would you ever do anything like that? Would you ever... Have you guys even been playing, practicing, rehearsing? What's the story? They've been rehearsing. Yeah, I haven't been over there yet, but they've been rehearsing. They've mm. even got, got some new songs written. I shouldn't okay. say that because then people <laughs> will be like, when's the next album coming out? Like, yeah, 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 just, yeah, yeah. We just put one out. <laughs> but, you know, five years. <laughs> people do that. They're like, man, you guys got to put a new album out. And then we go play live and they're like, sister fucker. <laughs> that's all they, you know, they don't even care about the new album. Yeah, great. Right. They don't even want to hear the new record. Yeah, and and that's but, in the Midwest. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, we've talked about doing a live stream. I don't know. 
I think we've gone this far without doing one. I kind of just want to wait and get yeah. back on stage. I don't see how a band like I Hate God could have the same power and energy through a camera lens, you know? Yeah. I mean, I know yeah. fans want to see it, that just they want us to do it just to do it, you know? But I, I don't know if we would – I don't want to put on a bad show or something because we're all just, like, bummed because we're yeah. in this dark room somewhere with cameras. I don't it's blame you. It's just not the same. Yeah. No, yeah. We're a I mean, live band, you know, with, with the best when people are drunk and jumping off the stage and it's a, a small club packed, you know, that's yep. that's where the, the the fun is, you know, the energy is at. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And we, and we can't wait. We can't wait to get back in there, man. Like, yeah. you know, I mean, you, you, you guys haven't played. We you know, People haven't seen shows in a year and a half, two years. Uh, like, you, like you said, you're going to let other bands maybe go out first, but – it looks like that bands like people are going to swarm to see shows as soon as the floodgates are open. Yeah, I'm hoping so, man. It, it might I don't be. Know what's going- yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, no, I was going to say it, it might be an abundance of bands and you're going to have to pick and choose like who the fuck. How am I going to fucking see, you know, like all these yeah. bands are playing coming to my area. You know, it might be like that, you know, in months I've to come. about that. Yeah, I've thought about that, you know. I don't know. I mean, and I don't know what clubs are going to be, uh, you know, there's talking about limited capacity mm-hmm. in some places. I don't know what if that's going to affect things, you know. We just we got a, a booking agent working on some stuff, you know, so we'll see what happens. Yeah, I feel like the, the limited capacity thing, it kind of definitely changes the vibe in the room, you know what I mean? Like where it's yeah. – uh, I don't want to play those shows. I mean, I'm sure if that's all there is, we'll have to do it. But yeah, you know, it's so weird. It's so up. fucking weird. Hey, man, I'm I'm coming to your town, but only 67 people of you can come. <laughs> right. Right. That's <laughs> terrible, though, man. You know, I don't, I don't nah. I want it when it's like, you know, fire marshal shows up. That's what yeah. I like, man. I want to get shut down. <laughs> yeah. The cops are there because there's too many people and <laughs> somebody got hurt. You know, that's that's the fun ones. Yeah. So you said that, that the band has gotten together, but you haven't. Are you guys not in the same same area now or is it? I'm in parts unknown right now. <laughs> <laughs> nice. and, Ro- and Rocco, don't you fucking ask again where I am. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I, I'm just out of town for a little bit, but uh, I'm going to I'm going to go down and rehearse with them soon when it get closer to figuring out what we're going to do. If we're going to, you know, tour wise, you know, mm-hmm. and if they get right some new stuff, you know, I'm gonna, we could record. Who knows? I shouldn't say that, but, you know, maybe. You didn't hear it here first. Kids. Is it coming out? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say that. I didn't, he, didn't, he didn't say it. He didn't say it here first, kids. So, so it, I, I heard you talk. This was probably in 2019, how the record was written uh, and you had to go in and do vocals. Yeah. Um, now, was it you had to write vocals or you had you knew what you were going to do for the 12 songs and then just kind of had to like do it? No, I mean, I, I usually go in this, I get the music from them, you know, like however long before I go in the studio mm-hmm. and I just listen to it over and over, you know, and just listen to it. Some of those songs we were doing live too, like everything, every day, mm-hmm. we were doing that one live, but it didn't have the same lyrics. It had, you know, different stuff going on, mm-hmm. but uh, yeah, I just take my notebooks and phone all the lyrics I got written and just go in the studio and just write it there, you know, just are fit you, things in. And, you know, are you, are, you, are you a writer as like, you're walking down the block and you're like, Oh shit, let me type this in. So I don't forget. Are yeah. you, a, are you a notepad guy? Are you, yeah, I got a notepad full of stuff. I got, I got notebooks, actual paper, yeah, <laughs> paper notebooks. And I got stuff on my computer. Mm-hmm. You know, I got I got all kinds of stuff written, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when we went in for this album, when I went in the studio, I had all the stuff written. But then some there was a few little things written in the studio, but you know, it was mostly old stuff, but you know. So I I remember it, this was probably like early mid 2000s you put out a, a book like that of like your lyrics and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Um you ever plan on doing that again cuz that's pretty cool. Yeah, well, I want to do more, you know, whenever uh I should I was going to say whenever I have time, but I just had <laughs> a whole year and a half. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, that that one's called Cancer as a Social Activity, and it's just like lyrics and stuff I've written, you know. But um, yeah, I, I want to do more of those, man. I just need to get off my ass and get it done, you know. Yeah. I'm gonna reprint that one too for the next tour. Nice. Because uh, I've seen it's like on people are selling it for like ridiculous prices, which is silly, man. Really? That's yeah, hard Re- to get now. Yeah. Yeah, it's strange. That's weird. Yeah, there there's a uh, there's a song on your album, and I love little pieces like this, no pun intended. Track ten is called Smoker's Piece. Yeah. <laughs> it's just this little ditty. And it's right. this little bluesy type of eerie uh <laughs> planet caravan type esque, you know, and it's only a minute and eleven. And for my yeah. e- for my ears, I'm like, oh fuck, I want more. Like yeah, wh- I get it. Yeah, wh- what? I know, why that little piece? Why that little placement? Why no lyrics? Could you give me a little insight on that? On that? On that That's song? Just, I mean, we've always like, uh, well, they, you know, I mean, I, well, also it's it's me too. But sometimes on stage, like when uh, I don't know, like Jimmy's pet breaks or something, like, and you know, so we go into like a blues jam, mm-hmm. you know, just like a little blues jazzy kind of little thing like that and uh, yeah. we've been doing it for years you know and then sometimes i'll like introduce the band over it you know and then jimmy gets his pedal back and he starts playing along with it and then sometimes it, it's gone on for like you know 10 minutes or something but we try not to make it that long but that was just something like they did in the studio like a little jam and they liked it enough and we all liked it enough and we yeah. said let's put it on the record you know i love shit like that man yeah, and yeah, and I'm and I'm sure it came probably organically, you know, and like yeah, like I said, on stage it comes from just you know having a minute where somebody's broke a string or or the drum pedals fucked up or something, so got they it. You start jamming, you know, and uh, yeah, and that's all. That's where it comes from. That's cool, man. Yeah, give me some insight because one of my favorite tracks on the album is the Trial of Johnny Cancer. And the right. one line you have, I'd rather be a corpse than a coward. I'm like, fuck yeah. <laughs> um, that song really stood out to me. I think it speaks for itself. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, uh, I don't know. I mean, I don't write lyrics. like My lyrics don't have like stories to them or anything. You know, there's, I like the, the abstract uh, way of writing, you know? Yeah. Like I don't, none of the songs have, you know, they're not about a certain thing. They could be about, 20,000 things or they, you know, it could be about nothing, you know, I just like the way words sound and look together, but, you know, keeping kind of the same vibe. Yeah. So that song, it's a, it's a weird one. At first we, uh, I didn't know what I was going to do over that song. Yeah. I I was just like, wow, this is real. It's really different for I hate God, that song. Mm -hmm. So I was like, man, I got to figure out how I'm going to sing over this. But uh, Sanford Parker actually in the studio helped me figure out some little patterns to do in that one. So nice. we, got it, we got it done. Yeah, it, it, and that that's like one of those songs that that stood out. And like you said, it, it maybe it, it's a little bit different for you guys, but in, a, in for sure in a good way. Yeah, thanks, man. I appreciate it. When you guys write a song, right? When you guys do the writing process, is it like like Jimmy comes up with like a a riff and then everyone else kind of like, Oh, I could put this to it. I could put that to it. Or is it just like you guys go in there jam and kind of see what comes out. Both, both ways, you know, there's some songs on this new, on the new record that our drummer wrote, Aaron wrote the guitar part nice. for it. He oh, wrote really? three black eyes. That song, three black eyes. Yep. He wrote that. But, and it's, it's strange too, because Joey, our, our drummer who passed away, he used to write guitar parts he's written some songs on like dope sick and um, I'm not sure what else, but mm-hmm. yeah. So we've got, we had two lucky to have two drummers who can play guitar and write guitar riffs. Yeah. Now he's, yeah. he's been in the band since I believe 2013. Yeah. Aaron Hill. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you know, I mean, not so new. We're looking at almost eight years, but yeah, he's at, not a new guy. Really, no, he's, he's not a new guy, but as a, as a newer member of the band, 
Yeah. How, how, how has it been throughout the... I mean, he's been in the band for eight years, so I'm sure it's going pretty well. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. We just, we're just we going to keep him, I think. <laughs> his, his tryout is almost over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's almost done. <laughs> but that that's awesome. So you, you definitely include him with... Yeah, man. Yeah, Aaron's great, man. He fits in. He's a weirdo like we are. So mm. he fits in, you know. I mean, it's not only getting somebody who can play the style of music we do but uh if you got to have somebody that can tour with yeah. you you know and you're not going to be sick of them oh of course you know? so you got to have like that chemistry with with him and then and it, it works out he, he's laid back on tour you know so mm. he, we get along with him you know because I'm, I'm sure man like I don't, I don't know if you guys ever but i'm sure you can get stuck with some fucking douche on tour and it's just a miserable tour <laughs> You've got to live well, with these we, people. Yeah, we've toured with some bands before that, uh, that. I won't mention any names. <laughs> yeah, like you know, like one or two of the guys in the other bands, like a dick, you know. So yeah, yeah, yeah. but most most that that's rare though. Honestly, we usually get along with all the bands. You know, we uh-huh. usually kind of pick and choose if we can who we're going to tour with anyway. You know. That's so, cool. I mean, we we've I've got friends um, from touring in the '90s, like early '90s. I still keep in touch with certain people, you know, that, yeah. that remained friends since then, you know. That's so it's fun. cool, man. But yeah, sometimes somebody can be annoying or something, you know. Especially if you're like on a bus together, you know. We usually tour in a van, like we we like the Sprinter van thing. It's big and nice. Like we just like to be alone. We don't want to be. We shared a bus with Napalm Death in last February, and that was uh-huh. cool. Those guys are all cool. Yeah. But there was five bands on that bus. Holy oh. shit! Yeah, plus the crew. So that was. <laughs> but everybody oh. got along. That was a good tour. How big was that fucking bus? How big was that shitter? <laughs> <laughs> it was huge, man. The bus. Yeah. Oh man! Yeah, I man. can imagine fucking you're talking five bands, fucking twenty people. At least yeah, just, twenty people. Yeah. Yeah, you're touring with your own spring break. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. It, it, <laughs> it, it it can be crazy, but that it was like a double decker bus, so like you can go upstairs and like get away from most people party downstairs. So if you're sleepy or whatever, you don't feel like partying, you just go upstairs and. Gotcha. So gotcha. Yeah. Do you remember a, a point in time for your career since I Hate God started where you were like? All right, we can we, we can do this. Like this, this is this is what we're gonna do. Screw everything else. This is this is like uh, we're getting recognition now. Wait, so what do you mean? Like, like like the first time that you actually felt like all right, you know, we belong to other bands, and you know, this is what this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna have a career with this. I mean, I don't even know if we feel like that now. <laughs> <laughs> We always feel like outcasts, man. This band is always, on every tour we've done, we might get along with everybody, but we're always the weird guys. Mm. We're always the band that's like the outcast band that everybody thinks are a bunch of weirdos. But I mean, I don't know, as far as, uh, I don't know if we ever really thought about that. Like, this is a career. I mean, Mm -hmm. I think we're all just happy that we don't have to work real jobs, you know? In the past, you know, just... 30 years. I, I was actually going to ask because some of the musicians that we do have on our podcast, like when they come off tour, it's time to go back to work. Yeah. Like, is yeah. that is that part of you guys? No, like you guys are. Well, uh, Gary, our bass player, he still works at, at a, a burrito place. <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't know if he needs to, but I mean, yeah. he, he still works there. Gotcha. And I think he's the only one. The rest of us guys haven't worked in a while. Or me and Jimmy haven't worked in ages. <laughs> actually, Jimmy actually is working. Wait a minute. I think Jimmy did take a side job during the pandemic. Okay. I think he's, yeah, I think he's working with a friend of ours, but I'm not sure what he does exactly. Gotcha. But I think it's just like something, you know, for the pandemic since there's been no touring. He's, he's sm- smuggling turtles over state line. <laughs> That's probably it. <laughs> That's got to be it. <laughs> I, I remember the first time that, that you know, I was a little late to the game. First time I heard about you guys was 90. Well, actually, the first time I, I even heard what I Hate God was, was, you know, I was a huge Pantera fan watching the uh, Unbroken video, Phil's wearing an I Hate God t-shirt. And I'm like, what is yeah. it? 
got to check this out. And back then, there, in 94, there wasn't, like, the internet to check stuff out, so you had to, like, talk to, like, friends. There was, like, tape traders and all that yeah. shit. Yeah. And, um, you know, one of my friends was, like, would never, like, he, he was one of those guys where if more than five people heard of the band, uh, they're played out and I listened to him. So you guys were like m- m- the <laughs> band that that I was able to impress him with. Where he's like, "Oh shit, what's this?" <laughs> and, oh wow, yeah. And and then we, you know, uh, you know, it just kind of caught out with with my group of friends at the time. But um, man, it, thirty fucking years. That's that's something. Three real well, thirty two and a half or something like that. Yeah, thirty two years. And it, it's you know, is there anything that you're else you're looking to accomplish? with this music thing man i don't know uh play some more crazy places you know like we played in 2019 you know indonesia and all that place some more strange places yeah wherever they are but uh i don't know man we've we we i never thought we would put out more than one record you know i thought Mm -hmm. we we were all in other bands back then you know we Mm -hmm. Me and Jimmy had thought of this kind of idea for the band. We just wanted to hear what we were, wanted to play what we were hearing in our, our heads, you know, this music that we were hearing. Yeah. And so, I mean, but I figured, you know, we might put one album out, do maybe a tour, and then our other band would be the one that would get, like, you know, would do something. Sure. But ended up, like, I mean, people started, I mean, we didn't even take, we couldn't even play our instruments really in the beginning, you know? I mean, Jimmy still got four strings in his guitar, but you know, <laughs> that's a true, that's true, man. But I mean, so we, we weren't taking it serious in the beginning at all. You know, yeah, we were yeah. just trying to annoy people and just play really <laughs> slow. This is back in like the eighties when, you know, thrash was still big and uh, we right. would just play really slow and like throw bottles at people and just, <laughs> just Jesus. get people pissed at us. You know, that's what we, and the feedback would just go on for, you know, the whole show. And that's what we were doing. You know, we, then people started liking it and we were like, wow, I guess this is not, cause it was for us. You know, we were just playing what we wanted to hear. Then it became like other people liking it, you know? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's been cool, man. I mean, I've been happy with the whole thing, you know? Well, that's, that's pretty fucking dope. Dude, your, your, your career definitely, it stands the test of time as far as, what type of music you play, the pioneers that you are in your genre. And I, 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 we hope to hear from you much more and we hope to see you near Jersey, hopefully New York. You come, come this way eventually and we can uh, have a, have a yeah. drink with you or whatever. And just, fuck yeah, man. you know, I think so, the last uh, time we played Jersey was with black label society. Like, I don't know if that was 2018. Okay. Right. Yeah, I can't remember, man. But Fuck. yeah, I had I had a friend today, always interested in our podcast. He's like, "Who you got on today?" And he doesn't know metal. He doesn't know stuff like this. You know, I'm just like, "Oh, it's yeah, a yeah. guy, guy named Mike Williams from a band called I Hate God." He's like, oh, "What are you gonna talk about?" I was like, "Jesus, <laughs> yeah, the Bible." <laughs> get into some deep passages in the Bible. <laughs> Brother, man, thank you so much for giving us time, bro. We really, really appreciate yeah, it. Uh, best of luck. Finally, with got, your... finally. I, I, I know. know we've been going back and forth for like. Yeah. Well, we appreciate it. Eight years. <laughs> yeah. Man. Yeah. No problem, man. Where, where can everybody find you uh, on the internet and purchase a history of nomadic behavior? Well, right now it's just available at the label and some other, play, you know, record stores and. There's a couple places that put out like uh, there's like 12 different colors of vinyl for this album. That's so cool. There's 12 different people that did their own vinyl. We we sold out of the band pre-orders. So, but we're gonna. I think we're getting some more. I'm not sure. I have to talk to Gary about that. But uh, yeah, you awesome. can. Um, that's where you can find the album at Century Media right now. But our our uh, Instagrams. I hate God Nola. You know, people can check us out there. Or mine, Southern Nihilism Front. Awesome. Keep up to date on all the uh, I Hate God happenings. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dude, thank you so much. We we, we so appreciate it. Uh, you're, yeah, man. you're a great guy, and uh, let's keep in touch, brother. Yeah, thank you guys, man. I appreciate it. Good to meet both of you, too. Yeah, yeah same she, here. Good luck and stay too. well. 
the yeah, great y'all too. Mike Nine Williams. That's me. Take care, y'all. Thanks. Right. Stay, stay safe. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the great Mike Nine Williams. Woo-wee! Nola at its finest. My man keeps it down to earth. Rock, their band screams loop lounge in Pasek. Yes. <laughs> but not it, only it, that, they, they're, they, when you talk about, you know how like sometimes you're like, yo, these guys are true. Yo, these guys are the real thing. Yeah. They would fuck up the real thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, and they're the type of band that I envy so much that the fucking longevity over 30 years didn't feel the need to put out 100 albums, made albums when they wanted to make them, made the albums they wanted to make. And you put on I Hate God album and you know who it is. Oh, yeah. It's not like, oh, that's kind of sounds. Like, no, that, that's <laughs> I Hate God. Nobody sounds like that. <laughs> no jerk off. Yeah. That doesn't sound like anybody else. You know, and, and I talked about it in an interview a little bit. Uh, I've got the the pleasure of being able to meet Mike and actually have a drink with him in Texas. And, you know, I met this guy there. And he's like, oh, yeah, Mike. I was like, oh, I know him well. He married me and my wife. I'm like, well, he married you and your wife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Turns out he wasn't lying, but this is the same guy also was on like five, four loco and like a fucking handful of pills. I'm like, okay, well, <laughs> um, but dude, no, what, he, a, real, what he, a real nice guy. He, oh, oh. he lied with my wife. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. He, um, yeah, man, we, 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 we shot the shit outside the hotel that everybody was staying at. Um, couldn't have been nicer. Just a real cool dude. And I, I, I really hope everybody goes out and buys the new album. It's awesome. A history of nomadic behavior. Uh, Get it now, man. They don't they don't put out a lot of albums. You gotta get it when it's out. Oh yeah. With that being said, Rocco, what do you have to say to the people? If you just heard us shooting the shit with Mike Nine and you're feeling fine, sipping two dollar wine out of an I hate God beer stein, then you just listen to Not These Two Fucking Guys podcast. We yeah. out. Brought to you by Twix. I'm not a magician, but I got a couple of Twix on my sleeve. <laughs> oh, boy.